Right, should we stop all of these high profile last minute replacement matchups? We've had some epic moments provided by these last minute switch ups. And again, Michael But we've also missed out on some really important fights by rushing into them when they were otherwise inevitable. I mean, take Volk versus Islam 2, for example. Their first fight was an instant classic. Volk shocked a lot of people. Islam was viewed as the boogeyman of lightweight, and a lot of people felt that Volk stood no chance. It was an incredible performance by both of them, and the fight was so close you could make a good argument that Volk won. There's no way that the rematch wouldn't have been booked relatively soon. It was as certain as Islam using IVs. Most likely after each of them made a single title defence in their own divisions. Other than money, which apparently isn't Volk's driving force, there was no good reason to take that fight on such short notice. 11 days notice. Volk is known for his vigorous training camps. The meat grinder preparations are notorious. There was no way he could be fully ready for Islam in that time. As fans, we missed out on what that fight should have been. And Volk lost out on a fair shake at another go at greatness. There is almost no chance of him getting that opportunity again. Less likely than Bilal getting a title shot. For Islam, of course, it was a massive stroke of luck. An amazing opportunity just fell onto his lap. He could get rid of one of his biggest threats, effectively, with one arm tied behind their back. You, know, you heard uh, Islam say, you know, no excuses and, and, and things like this. It's just, it's just uh, one thing I want to say is like, uh, put it this way, 100% if the roles were reversed, this fight is not happening. I don't care what anyone says, he's not fighting on 12 days notice. Volk has a point. The Dagestanis will pull out quicker than me when the missus is getting broody, if every little detail isn't perfect. Probably wise, really, in fairness. Being more concerned with records and careers rather than proving how big their balls are, all while benefiting in their careers while fighting last minute opponents. Not only did Islam get Volk at the last minute, but he beat Dan Hooker on four weeks notice, and then Bobby Green on nine days notice, and those two wins are what secured him a title shot against Charles Oliveira. What the fuck is that? I mean, that's absolutely madness. In the division that everyone goes on about being the most stacked division in the UFC. Ridiculous. So three of his last four different opponents have been late notice. But in fairness, that's not his fault. It's just luck. Neil Magny just recently replaced Jeff Neal against Ian Gary on just 10 days notice. Now, in fairness, it's a disadvantage for both fighters, but it's a massively bigger disadvantage for the late replacement fighter. But as we all know, Ian Gary is no stranger to a 40-year-old that he can't finish. Usman versus Kamzat was another example. One moment, they're going to make Kamzat versus Kamaru at 170, or the full camps for both, in Usman's natural weight class. A few moments later, due to Usman being too game for his own good, he finds himself fighting Chimaev at his natural weight class on just 10 days' notice. What the fuck happened there? And I think we all agree that Kamaru probably would have won that fight on fair terms. I mean, he would have won the fight on the bad terms if he just had two more rounds. <laughs> ow, ow. Again, Kamzat versus Holland was another one. I think that was one day's notice, wasn't it? Granted, they both had full training camps, but that's bollocks, because Holland was scheduled to fight Daniel Rodriguez. With all due respect, now you can't tell me that a full camp focused on Daniel Rodriguez is in any way similar to a training camp focused on Kamzat Chemaev. Especially knowing that Chemaev will come out more aggressive than a fart in a warm shower. Of course, it doesn't always end badly. There are moments like Rockhold versus Bisping. Tom Aspinall versus Pavlovich is another example. It worked out well for Tom, who had no training camp and literally came off the couch. But while Pavlovich did have a camp, it was still last minute change for him also, so it's still not ideal for either. But that's a different circumstance entirely anyway, as both previous fighters were out. So it makes more sense and is more in line with what I'm saying. Stipe didn't just fight a new opponent last minute. And now he's still going to be fighting John Jones with a full Jones targeted training camp. And the Diaz versus Ferguson switch up gave us a better matchup than we had for both fighters on the same card. But again, that's different because they weren't fights of any significance division wise and they were more favourable matchups anyway. I mean, you've got to admit, watching Diaz versus Chemaev would have been more difficult to watch than Paddy's fucking cornrows. Yeah, it's, it's going to stay now. So the alternative, of course, is cancelling the fight, or rather rescheduling it. It's not great, but if it's a fight that has major implications for the division as well as the fighters' careers, and if it's within just a couple of weeks of the fight, it's not ideal, but the fight has to be rescheduled. Not only is it not fair for both of the fighters, but don't you want to see the right opponents get the right opportunities for the sake of waiting until like the next card? 
Obviously, if the fighter's injured and needs surgery or something, the division has to go on. But even then, shouldn't the uninjured fighter get a full camp focused on the new opponent? The UFC, however, is a business, and it's unlikely that they're going to rethink their approach. But that's just my take. Anyway, if you like this video, give us a sub, check out this playlist of recent bangers, and I'll see you next time.